All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome everyone to Aspen Tech's presentation of what's new in Zoho CRM. This is our recap of the winter 2023 uh, new features and functionality. Start with some introductions here. Um, on the personal side, uh, I'm Marshall Knapp, uh, president and owner here at Aspen Tech CRM. Uh, we've been in the customer relationship management space, uh, or I've been in the customer relationship management space and, and dealing with related solutions since 1999. Uh, and I've been a Zoho certified consultant since 2014. Uh, our company has been in that space, in the CRM space, uh, and dealing with related solutions since 1994. So predating me a few years there. Uh, and we've got clients throughout North America and in virtually all industries. Um, we're based in Novi, Michigan, which is about halfway between Detroit and Ann Arbor, for any of those of you who might not be local. Uh, and we've got a team of eight uh, U.S.-based consultants, trainers, developers, and support staff to really help you with anything that you can think of uh, Zoho related. So uh, our agenda for today, uh, we're scheduled for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, we're gonna start with a presentation here of new Zoho CRM features and functionality. Um, this is basically taking us from November, 2022 to February, 2023. Then we're gonna get into a live demonstration uh, of, those, uh, of a lot of those features and functionality. Uh, and then we'll have some time at the end as well for some Q and A. Um, Feel free to post to the Q&A along the way here too. Um, I'll try to answer some questions if I can as we go. Uh, otherwise, that way they're just there uh, for the end and you don't forget what you wanted to ask. Uh, a couple of other quick notes. Um, with the presentation, the slides will be sent to you afterwards. I'm gonna send out an email likely tomorrow uh, with those slides so you'll get those after this. And this is being recorded as well. So you'll get a recording of this uh, entire presentation, including the demo uh, following as well. So uh, one last thing before we get started, I just wanted to put a little disclaimer out there. Um, not all of the features that we're going to see here today are available in all CRM editions. Um, as you may or may not know, Zoho has a variety of different editions for uh, CRM and their other applications. And uh, depending on that, the features and functionality will vary. So as new things are rolled out, of course, that's going to vary as well. Um, some of these as well are in early access. Uh, so that means that Zoho has not publicly rolled them out to all users. Some of them might be available to partners. Some of them might be available to select customers, might be available on certain data centers, different things like that. So um, just let us know if um, we can help you get access here. Um, you know, we've got access obviously to Zoho's partner team and, and some support back channels and things like that, that uh, uh, we can often help get you access to things uh, if you need some assistance. So let us know if you're interested in any of these and you don't have them already and we'll do what we can to help you get them. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the fun stuff here. So one of the, one of the things that Zoho added here is a number of uh, new items for list views. Um, we now can include scoring fields for leads, deals, records like that with any list view. Uh, we have the ability now to take a number of contextual actions, as you can see on screen here, uh, directly from the list view. You can uh, go ahead and edit the record. You can send an email, create a task, convert, change owner, add tags, delete, and more. Um, you can select multiple records and potentially do those directly from there as well. Um, you also can now pin and unpin columns. Uh, so if you've got something that you want to have stuck right at the beginning of the, the list view, and as you scroll to the right, you know, always have that column locked in place, you can, you can do that. Uh, you can now sort and unsort, uh, the, you can toggle the sort and unsort much more easily than you could in the past. Uh, as, and you can also remove the activity uh, notification, the activity, what they call the activity badge. Uh, that's actually something that I think a lot of users find helpful, but if you don't use that, or if it's just taking up some extra real estate that uh, you prefer not to have it on there, you can certainly remove that as well. Another very commonly used feature here is lookups in Zoho. Uh, and the lookup is when you're basically connecting one record to another um, in, in the system. And you want to then, in this lookup window, obviously identify the right record to connect it to. And previously, the fields that you would see here and uh, how it would search for that record um, was all system defined. You didn't have any flexibility really in there. Um, but now you can customize these fields that you see here, as well as filter the records 
um, based on custom fields. Uh, so that's very helpful. You can find the records that you want to connect to much more easily now. So client script support for wizards. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a step back because I'm not sure everyone will know what client script is. Uh, client script is something that allows us to run code that normally had been reserved for, or traditionally in the past had been reserved for uh, things that had to happen when a record was saved. And then we could trigger certain actions to, to take place, like pulling in data from another record or maybe doing some calculations or validating uh, that, that something was filled in properly, things like that. Um, but client script gives us the ability now to actually have those things happening live on screen while we're creating a new record or while we're editing a record. The other thing I'm not sure everybody knows about are wizards. Um, wizards are something that allows you to step through the creation or the edit of a record in a more systematized way than just simply pulling up the entire record for editing. And I'm gonna show you guys these things when we get into the live demo here. Um, so if it sounds a little bit foreign or the concept is a little bit fuzzy to you right now, I will get into it a little bit deeper and, and show you live on screen what we're talking about here. Um, but this is a really powerful feature because now with client script and, and, and using that in conjunction with wizards, um, we can have things like pop up on screen when you go to create a new record or when you're editing a record. Uh, we can have data automatically load into that record from other places in the system when you go to create it or edit it or in the, while you're in the process of doing those things. Uh, we can validate the data while we're still on the screen there before you actually even click the save button. So you can immediately know if you entered things correctly or if that email address already exists in the system or different things like that. Uh, and then we can also display alerts um, and perform validations when you're switching screens between uh, within the wizard. So I mentioned that it's more of a systematized way of creating records when you're in a wizard. So as you go from screen to screen, uh, that can also display alerts or, or do some validation there. So again, powerful features. Uh, I will show you more in the live demo about how that works. We also have some new capabilities for subforms. Uh, we now can include both file upload and user fields within subforms. We've had those fields for uh, traditional modules for quite some time, but now we can obviously include those in subforms as well. Uh, we can also mark a subform as required. And by marking a subform as required, uh, that's going to mean that you have to enter at least one row into that subform before you can save the overall record. Enhancements to Blueprints. Um, blueprints, I think most people will be aware of, but Blueprints is a, another kind of business process type tool, not incredibly unrelated to something like Wizards, but uh, a little bit different. Um, blueprints do kind of step you through a process in a systematized way um, and can definitely help ensure a very consistent experience for your users, your customers alike and also make it really easy to step through the system as you as you do different things uh, with the records in your CRM. Um, a couple of the enhancements that we've added here or Zoho's added here are parallel transitions and multiple transitions between states. And again, this is something that probably is going to feel a little bit fuzzy or maybe a little foreign here while we're talking about it on screen like this, but I'll show you in the live demo how this type of stuff works. But imagine a process uh, where you have sort of multiple things that need to take place, but they could happen in any order. But before they, you can move on to the next step, you have to have all of those things completed. So in this particular example here, we're doing a new vendor uh, sort of approval process, onboarding process, where you know, we might need an ID card and some documents and some biometrics type of stuff and other things taking place. And some of that stuff might happen at one time, some of that might happen at a different time. The point is that before we are, can verify this vendor, we need to have all of these things in place. And these new transitions and these new enhancements to blueprints allow us to much more easily make those things happen uh, in any sort of order that we want them to, as opposed to being a little bit more rigid like they would have had to have been in the past, where you'd have to sort of step through one piece at a time in a particular order, or you'd have to just do them all at once. So this gives us a lot more flexibility with how to create these business process tools inside the CRM. 
Right, circuits, this is a completely new feature inside CRM. Uh, it is a low code visual uh, machine builder. Basically, it allows you to take business processes, another business process related app here, but take business processes and build those into the CRM, but also while integrating potentially third party apps. And this allows you, it's a, it's a developer's tool, um, but it does give you the ability to build some things with this low code platform, which means you don't necessarily have to be an expert programmer. To, to get in there and start playing around. All right, there's also a new workflow trigger now in CRM. Uh, the new trigger is for any field in the specific section getting modified. So you have different sections within a layout um, within the CRM records, you know, like lead information, deal information, address information, those might be some different sections within uh, your, your records. And those sections are going to contain fields. Previously, if we wanted to trigger something off of a field change, we would have to go in and specify each individual field, or we'd have to just say, you know, carte blanche whenever this record is edited. Uh, but now we can actually say if any field in a specific section gets modified, go ahead and trigger that workflow action. Uh, the nice thing about this is that. You can simply drag and drop fields into that section. Uh, if you want them to be included in this workflow, you don't actually have to go in and edit the workflow itself. And it can also greatly simplify uh, the workflows that you do have in place because you can remove a lot of those field change triggers that you would have had to build in the past and replace them with just a single uh, section based trigger. Dynamic reporting criteria. Uh, this is another exciting one. Um, we now have the capability to uh, not only specify a certain value uh, when we're uh, building our criteria in reports, but we can also, instead of uh, providing a value, we can actually choose another field within the system. They have to be of the same data type. So like you can compare it to currency field or to date field or to checkbox fields, things like that. Um, but now we can use dynamic criteria to build reports as opposed to fixed costs, dates, amounts, things like that. And so, you know, if you wanted to compare something like actual cost versus budgeted cost in a, from a reporting basis, this would be a good way of doing that. If you wanted to compare projects that you've overrun your timeline on, your, your past due on, this would be a great way to do that sort of thing. Uh, CRM notes now sync with Zoho Analytics. So we can now include notes uh, in the sync setup within uh, analytics. That's part of the data sources and the sync options there. And then, of course, you can utilize the notes data that you have in the system to uh, create any sort of analytics types reports that you would ordinarily create over in Zoho Analytics. So um, powerful feature there that I think a lot of people have been waiting on for a long time. It was one of these uh, odd sort of things that it wasn't syncing in the past, uh, where everything else would sync from the CRM or most everything else would. Um, so it's nice to have notes in there now. Okay, updates to emails related list. So emails can now be viewed in a thread as opposed to having all of the individual emails in there, um, which helps organize that list a little bit better, kind of clean up that list if, if you like having them organized that way. You can also resize the columns in the related list. Uh, so if you want to make the subject a lot longer than maybe the date, um, as most people probably would, you, know, you have flexibility now there to personalize that. Uh, you also have att attachment options as well um, for Zoho WorkDrive and other cloud storage uh, uh, tools. So if you have emails that you've uh, attached in the CRM or received from a client or customer and attached in the CRM, uh, and there's attachments within those emails, uh, you can easily save those attachments out to the attachments related list, to your Zoho WorkDrive account, uh, or to other cloud storage services that you might be utilizing. 
the survey and CRM integration has uh, been improved. It's a relatively minor change, but it's a helpful one. Uh, so when sending from CRM, it used to be that all of your surveys would just be in one long list here. Um, but now they're all organized and categorized by department. So it just makes it a lot easier to find the surveys that you're looking for there. There's a number of new features in the deals and forecasts area. So under reason for loss, um, that's a field that was part of the default deals module uh in crm or you might have renamed yours to like potentials or opportunities things like that uh, but reason for loss is a default field in that module that was just an open text field and um, you know why you're winning or losing um, business is obviously an important thing and so making reason for loss a pick list now allows us to do a lot more analysis and reporting and analytics on um, why we're why we're losing deals and so this is a customizable field. Uh, in any new instance of CRM, it'll be there by default. Um, for any existing users, what's happening is this is gonna get added behind the scenes and you'll have to actually add it to your own layout if you wanna utilize it. Um, but I think it's worth considering uh, rename or using this new field for reason for loss as opposed to the, the default one from before because of some of those advantages we just mentioned there. Uh, the other thing you can do with this too is you can use it in dependency mapping. So uh, when you have uh, you know one field that's dependent on another field to to populate which pick list uh, options are avail available, um, now you can use something like this field uh, in in those types of scenarios. We also have new uh, dashboards within forecasts. So there's a a forecast overview, which shows things here like performance trend and uh, achievement comparison and the comparison across various forecasts from different quarters. And then in addition to that, there's also some user performance dashboards that have been added as well. Pathfinder. Uh, Pathfinder is a completely new feature in Zoho CRM. Um, this allows you to sort of monitor and uh, engage with the data that comes from how your customers engage with your business as they uh, as they journey through um, your your business processes. So as they are a new lead and they're you know initially being qualified and and you're creating a new deal and, and tracking them through that process or as they go through the customer service and support process, um, or as they're engaging with your website online. Um, now Zoho can actually track the various ways in which a single you know, lead or contact uh, is engaged with, and it will show you then uh, reports of how your customers journey through your organization. Um, this allows you to do some pretty powerful stuff. Um, with this, um, you can easily, um, well, I shouldn't say easily, but much more easily find the uh, ways in which successful sales are happening, as well as maybe where things are stalling out and people are dropping off. Um, you can also filter this information based on different factors or, or demographics. So you can see how different types of prospects or customers engage with your business or your users differently. It's a very powerful, new, exciting feature there in Pathfinder. Um, there's been a number of enhancements to Zia as well. Uh, there's a, some advanced filters now to find uh, other records with similar recommendations. So maybe you can take uh, a single action all at once with multiple records kind of in the same place. Uh, they've added some things in the data enrichment area to show um, how that's been utilized in the past um, overall as an organization as well as uh, by user. Uh, there's improvements as well to the prediction builder. Um, so about things like best time to contact or deal prediction scores, things like that. And now they're also including uh, prediction accuracy scores with that. Uh, and then they also added subject line suggestions, which is kind of an interesting one. So if you're typing up an email in Zoho, um, you know, you type the body of the email, you haven't put a subject in yet, uh, Zoho can easily analyze the content of that email 
And when you go to input a subject, it will actually suggest one for you if you have that enabled. So um, pretty interesting stuff there with uh, the artificial intelligence engine from uh, Zia here. And there's more actually, uh, I believe, on the next slide here. Let's get over there. Yep. So Zia Strategy Influencer, this is actually a brand new uh, tool as well within the, the Zia portfolio in Zoho. Um, it actually looks at trends and patterns and will make recommendations for you. Uh, and these are not just simple recommendations like sell more and, and obviously your revenue will go up or something like that. It actually tries to determine why certain things are happening within the system, why certain anomalies take place, or it might try to predict certain things in the future based on other factors that have happened in the past. So pretty interesting. And uh, that's an exciting one that we're, uh, we're eager to dive into. Uh, they've also updated the best time to contact. There's a new user interface for that. And there's some, also some additional charts and KPIs that tie into that that will show uh, how that's being utilized within your CRM deployment. Uh, for anyone who's not aware, Motivator is a uh, gamification tool within Zoho CRM. So uh, what this does is it allows you to create things like contests uh, and awards and stuff like that based on user behavior. Uh, and so it allows you to drive behavior that obviously you're looking to reward or that you want to incentivize. So it could be you know, converting leads, it could be closing tasks, it could be closing deals, different things like that. And so Motivator in and of itself is not new, but obviously there's some new features here. And so you, know, you can change um, visibility of how people can see the targets um, based on role hierarchy now, which is kind of nice. So you can not necessarily giving that information to everybody. Um, you can customize the dashboard uh, more easily now uh, based on groups of users, whether that's a, a, what Zoho actually calls groups or individual roles that have, might have multiple users um, or an individual user itself. Uh, there's also other options now for the different menus. Uh, you can see those on screen there, the different things you can do, like adding a dashboard, adding a TV channel, stuff like that. One of the really cool things is the TV channel feature here. And that's what allows you to put this up on, say, you know, a screen in a conference room or in the uh, lunch room or something like that at your office if you want to um, kind of keep everybody informed on, on how, how the contests or the awards are going. Uh, there's also a number of new APIs available for Zoho CRM. These are the V4 APIs, version 4. Um, anybody who's not aware, API is an application programming interface. And so this is basically how we connect Zoho with other applications, um, other web applications in particular. And so there's a number of new APIs for uh, mass changing owner, mass delete, mass convert, user groups, portals, emails, profiles, as well as mapping dependencies. Um, and so all of those expand the capabilities now of what you can do when integrating Zoho with other apps. So if you've been limited in the past and uh, some of these things might open up some new possibilities for you, definitely explore them. Uh, and there's also some things uh, that they do to increase like the efficiency of the API. And so you know, adding the ability to fetch up to 2000 records per query call, where previously that was only 200, obviously uh, gives us you know, 10 times the ability there to, to pull records. And we also have now some additional um, aggregate functions that are supported with select queries. So you can do things like sum and max and min, average and count. Uh, all of those are available now through the API. So if you are using API calls in your Zoho, if you've got Zoho integrated with some other applications, um, this may be an opportunity to look at how you've got uh, everything built and whether or not there's an opportunity to add some new features and functionality with these new APIs that they've got, or possibly um, improve the efficiency uh, of your API calls. And Zoho does limit the number of API calls that, that you can make. Um, they're, they're, it's pretty large numbers, so it's not anything that most people are concerned with. But if you are doing a lot of integrations or a lot of integrating Zoho with other things, then uh, you may run into uh, some limits there. And ensuring that your API calls are, are optimized and efficient 
would of course uh, help you out there and, and prevent you from hitting some of those limits as quickly. And if you do hit any limits, you can also extend those. You can purchase more API calls and stuff like that. But uh, obviously, if we can make this more efficient, then that's uh, that's better for for you. Uh, you're not going to have to spend any extra money on those additional API calls. All right. Uh, updates to emails deliverability. Uh, we have something called authenticated domains when it comes to email deliverability. Um, and those are typically going to be your business domain. So ours is aspen-tech.com or zoho is zoho.com or zohocorp.com, different things like that. Um, and you have to authenticate those domains within your CRM, which basically tells Zoho and the rest of the world out there that it's okay for Zoho CRM to send emails looking like you, looking like they're coming from your domain, even though Zoho is not technically you, because you obviously it's your Zoho CRM, you're in there, you're steering the ship, right? So you wanna be able to send emails out of there that look like they're coming from you, but you want Zoho to be able to send and deliver those. And so email authentication is how we tell Zoho and tell the rest of the internet connected world out there that it's okay for Zoho to be sending those emails on behalf of us and that they're not junk or spam or phishing messages and things like that. Well, if you have not authenticated your domain uh, with Zoho by April 1st, 2023, so just coming up here in about a month, a little less than a month, um, Zoho is going to automatically reformat uh, your email messages that come out of Zoho CRM. Not your Outlook, not what you're sending from your iPhone or your Android device or anything like that, but specifically email messages that originate out of Zoho CRM. Um, because this is, a, this is a reliability problem uh, if Zoho doesn't address things like this, because ultimately their reputation is on the line if they're allowing people to use their services in ways where they don't require these types of things to happen. So uh, Zoho is taking these steps to require the domains be authenticated. Uh, the good news is that if you have your own business domain, you know, abccompany.com, whatever it may be, uh, then you should be able to authenticate your domain pretty easily. Uh, if that's not your area of expertise or you don't feel comfortable doing that sort of thing, it's definitely something that we can help guide you through or if you've got a local IT person, web developer, uh, they're pretty good with those things as well. So let us know if you need any help there. Um, the other thing I wanna mention though as well is that if you have a public domain, if you're using Gmail or Yahoo or anything like that integrated with your Zoho CRM, you're, you don't have a choice. You cannot authenticate a public domain because you don't own that domain. You don't, I mean, you could own potentially you know, Google or Yahoo or something like that, but I don't know of any of our clients that do. So um, you can't authenticate those domains because they're public domains. And you ought to really consider if you are using this for business purposes anyways, uh, getting uh, a business domain and, and putting that in there. It'll help um, with your own branding as well as ensuring uh, better deliverability of your email messages. Right. And then there's a few miscellaneous updates that I also wanted to cover here. So uh, assignment rules can be reordered. So it kind of affects your order of operations there. Uh, the limit on formula fields has been increased. Uh, depending on your edition, uh, those numbers are gonna vary a little bit. So I didn't put that specifically in here, but if you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, you also have the ability now to mark as unavailable in the Google Calendar. So uh, the way that that integrates with Zoho CRM now supports the mark is unavailable option in the calendar. And then uh, Canvas templates can now be shared with other CRM organizations. And if you're not uh, sure what a Canvas template is, you can actually look at the screenshot there uh, on screen or the image there on screen. Um, that is a not brand new, but relatively new way of designing your layouts inside of Zoho. And it's completely changing the way that we can design and develop these, um, optimizing things for space, putting images in there, different colors, fonts, things like that, and um, really making the uh, layouts much more intuitive and kind of fun to work with. Um, 
So now you can build these fancy layouts and then potentially share them with another CRM organization. So if you've got a, maybe a friendly competitor or something like that in the same space as you, you build a layout, you want to help them out, you can share that type of stuff. Uh, we're also going to potentially start building some layouts that we may be able to then share with you. Uh, and so look for more on that in the future. The other thing I want to mention just briefly about Canvas is uh, we've got another webinar actually coming up two weeks from today on March 16th. Uh, covering uh, Canvas layouts in Zoho CRM, how you can work with those, what they're all about. And so I definitely encourage you to uh, check that out if you have some time. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the live demonstration. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna take a moment and check on the questions here. So give me just a second to do that. Okay, looks like we're doing good on the, on the questions still. Uh, just as a reminder, um, if you do have any questions as we go through the presentation today, uh, feel free to post those to the Q&A area. You'll see a little question mark icon in the Zoho meeting or Zoho webinar toolbar down at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, that'll get you into the Q&A. And uh, feel free to post as we go. If I can stop and answer a question that I see as it pops up, I certainly will. Uh, if I can't stop at that time, we'll definitely have some time at the end uh, to get into questions as well. So um, go ahead and post those in there and uh, we'll address them as we can. Thank you. All right, so let's get out of here. And let's get into Zoho. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go in the same order that I did uh, for the uh, uh, show presentation there. I'm not going to get into 100% of the features, but I'm going to kind of generally follow that same outline that we just went through. Um, so here we are inside Zoho CRM. This is actually a Zoho One instance uh, that includes all the various apps from Zoho. Um, what I'm going to do is go into the leads module here and talk about some of the list view enhancements that have been made. So inside the list views now we have the ability to include scoring rules which you can see right here that column was simply added uh, within the view here by modifying this and for choosing from the available columns over here um, the other option you have to do that sort of thing is you can manage your columns right here that it's not new but having the ability to add the lead scoring rules or lead scores uh, from there is so nice thing there um, also within the manage columns you now have the ability to remove the activity badge. So that's this thing here, August 20th, 2020. That'll show you if you have like an upcoming task that's not yet due yet, or in this case, we have something that's pretty, or very much past due, so it's showing in red uh, to indicate that. But if you don't wanna see that on there any longer, you can just uncheck that, hit save here, and then that won't show up anymore for you. You get some more real estate back. You also have the ability now to do some additional things um, within this little menu, this sort of hamburger menu, if you like, uh, where you can sort ascending or descending um, by that certain field. Um, you can also unsort now within there. And then you also have the ability to pin a column. Now, company's already at the beginning here, uh, and I don't have that many columns showing, but let me add a few more columns here so that this is a, a little bit more relevant. So that title, phone, maybe website, and industry. So now we've got a handful more fields on there, and I can't see industry all the way over there while still looking at companies, so I don't really know which companies are in which industries. So I'll go up here, I'll pin this column, and now that's gonna stay put right there, and now I can scroll over, keeping company there, but seeing all the other information that I wanted to here. The other thing that we have now is the ability to do the contextual actions within here. So you can go in and directly from the, the list view here, um, go in and take any of these actions that you'd like to. Right. We're gonna go into one of these leads here. Actually, you know, we're gonna go into a contact instead. And let's go into here. And let's suppose that uh, Trevor here is no longer with ABC Company and he has moved on to a different organization, okay? 
Um, so I'm going to want to change the company that he's associated with. So this is the lookup window here that allows me to do this. This is looking up into the companies or the accounts module to allow me to select a different company. And in the past, um, you could search, of course, by company name, uh, and you had certain fields here to help you find the right company. Um, but you didn't have a lot of flexibility if you wanted to search for something else or if you wanted other fields to show up here. And so now we have the ability to add columns within here. So you can customize the columns that go within here. Um, so maybe we want to add even something like the, 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 the state. Actually, we already have the state. Perfect. Um, that's something you wouldn't have been able to have on there before and um, might be something handy to be able to search by. So we'll leave that on there. And now if we want to filter by something like state, we can do that. And if I scroll over here, I should move that field up. Um, there it is, billing state. So now I can filter by state, okay? Whereas before, I was really only searching by company name. So now I can find companies in a particular state if I don't remember the name, or I can find them by industry or account status or whatever I'd really like to. So um, there's a lot more capabilities here now when you're doing these lookups. I'm going to take you into the client script uh, in the wizards. So this is one that I mentioned is one you definitely got to sort of see to fully grasp. Um, let me pull up a existing account that we have in here, Mizell's Marketplace. And this demo environment is a uh, bakery and catering company. They do cooking classes, stuff like that too. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new catering order, okay? So we're creating this new catering order. And imagine that this is normally what a catering order would look like. It's got all these fields, a whole bunch of required stuff, and you got to input all of this all at once. Um, and the other thing is you may already have some of this information in other places, like Mizell's Marketplace, the company may already have the address on it uh, where, where it needs to be catered to or the phone number of the location, um, things like that, okay? Or you might have, you know, profit, you know, things over here coming from the deal, information like that, okay? And so in the past, we would have had to either re-enter that information directly in here, or we would have had to add a record like this, leave those things blank, so meaning we could not require them, and then we'd have to save the record, and then you'd see if it would populate with the information from the other places. Well, the combination of wizards and client script changes all of that. I'm going to change this over to this catering order wizard. And you can see here that unlike a traditional Zoho layout, we've actually got some instructions here. We could make a pop-up come up as well if we wanted to, to give your users some insight into what it is they're expected to do here. So we've got some instructions. Could have a pop-up if we want. I've got it linked to the company already because that's where I created the catering order from. Now I'm going to go in and select a contact here. So I'm going to grab this contact who happens to work there. It's already filtered for that for me. And then I'm going to go to the next screen. And now what's cool here is that it automatically pulled in the address from the company. If this is the address where they want the catering order delivered, great. I don't have to rekey anything. But if it's not, I can easily change that and overwrite that. Oops, it doesn't look like we had a phone number though. So we need to input a phone number. So let me grab Abby's phone number while I've got her on the phone with me. We'll input that right there. And then another thing that this can do too is we're naming this event. We're automatically naming the event based on the company name, the contact name, and the date we're inputting this. We can name it based on the date of the event if we had that type of information, things like that too. But this is another thing that we would have had to save the record in the past before we could have created this name in some automated way. And now we can do that live on screen as we go. I'm gonna put in a price that we quoted them. Let's say we quoted 1500 for the event. They had budgeted 1800, so we're good there. And all right. Got one more thing here. Uh, this is just some things relating to this event, some expenses that we potentially anticipate having. So we'll say travel. This is using that new uh, user lookup field within the subform. So we're going to say this is Teresa doing that. 
and that's going to be a hundred dollars and you could add additional ones here they'll all total up down here too so let's just put uh, one more in here um uh, let's say place settings and we'll put there on there and we'll say that's four okay perfect so now we're going to go ahead and save this order it says congratulations it's been saved uh, if there was a problem we could pop up something saying about that and now we have this catering order uh, automatically added under my Zell's marketplace so it's a nice enhancement to CRM not only having wizards like that uh, but also being able to use the client script within that. Uh, one of the other things I didn't mention was like data validation. We could have potentially done something with like the budget and the um, uh, cost. Uh, if we were proposing something that was greater than the price, we could have had it tell us that you can't save the record that way, that they're not going to be able to afford what we're proposing. And, and as a result, we can't save the, the order. Uh, so you can do things like that with client script too. So it really adds some nice features and functionality uh, to your system. All right. So let's go to the vendors module in here and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the new blueprint uh, process. Or new blueprint transitions. So I'm going to create a new vendor, and this vendor is um, someone that we're going to take through a qualification or an onboarding process with our organization. And so we've got a few things that we need to do with them. They can technically happen in any order. They just need to all happen before we can approve the vendor. So that's where these uh, new transitions really come in handy for us. So let's add in here um, John's cleaning. And we don't really have to put in a lot else here, but this vendor status is important. And them being a prospective vendor is what controls the blueprint. And you can see that eventually they can be approved, an active vendor, a rejected vendor, things like that. But once somebody goes in as a prospective vendor, they're sort of what we would say locked in the blueprint, meaning that I can't go edit that field any longer. I can't edit vendor status all on my own. I need to edit it by use of the blueprint transitions. So there's a few things that we're gonna do with this vendor. We're gonna review their proposal. We're gonna collect their W9. We're gonna do some research on them. And we're also gonna verify that they meet some internal criteria. If we can't do those things, we're gonna reject the vendor. If we can do those things, we're eventually going to approve the vendor. Now I can't approve the vendor though until those things are done. In the past, you would have had to do all of these things either all at once or you would have had to do all of them in a very specific order. You, you wouldn't be able to bounce around or go out of order. And we know things don't always go according to plan, so uh, it's nice to have these new options. And so what this allows us to do now is I can take any one of these and say, okay, yeah, research is done. And I got to insert a note to say, here's what I researched about them, here's what I liked, what I didn't like, da da da. And I put that in. So now you can see research vendor. I got that checked. I've completed that piece of criteria as far as my blueprint transition is concerned. Now I'm going to collect their W9, okay? And so when you do that, um, you might potentially um, require that they attach a file or something along those lines. And I think we actually do have one of those, yep, right here under review proposal. So I'm going to go in and say, yep, I got to I gotta update, upload a file here, um, or, you know, this isn't going to work, okay? And so we're going to say, yep, we got to put that one in there. I'm going to attach that and save that. And now we've reviewed the proposal and it's verified that. And then the last step to this is meeting the internal criteria. Now I could have done this in any order, but this is just what happens to remain at this point. So once I click on that, now I can sign a contract or even still potentially reject the vendor. I've accomplished all those other things out of order. It doesn't matter what, I, what order I went in there, but once I got all those done, now I'm at the point where I can sign the contract, and then that's an active vendor. So this changes what we can do with the blueprints, makes them much more adaptable um, for the way that you work. And uh, if you haven't explored blueprints, uh, it's definitely a cool thing to, to get into, and I would encourage you to, or let us know if there's anything we can do to help you uh, get the most out of blueprints or help you get going in the right direction.
right, over in companies, I'm going to go in here and let's just pull up Aspen Tech as a company here. Over in companies, we've got this section here that says sync with contacts. And this is a pretty common thing that we do for a lot of our clients. Um, we will create a, a workflow or a series of workflows and functions that will copy information automatically from the accounts or company records down to the contacts. You typically have information that is company centric. Uh, but you need to use that in conjunction with the contacts for things like marketing, segmentation, reporting, or other purposes. Uh, and when you when you have the fields at the company level, you can you know put those same fields at the contact level too. But unfortunately, Zoho doesn't uh, keep those in sync for you. So that's why we put those workflows and functions in place. The thing that has changed now is that we have the ability, instead of triggering off of each of these individual fields saying, hey, if any one of these is edited, now we can say if anything within this section is edited, then go ahead and trigger the workflow. So that allows us to make our workflows much more efficient, um, much simpler. It also allows us to uh, more easily control uh, what goes into that workflow. We don't even have to edit the workflow. All we have to do is put a new field into this section. So if I went in to edit this particular layout, and I said, you know, I really want to see SIC code at the contact level because that's going to be important for some of the marketing segmentation that we're doing. Um, all I would have to do in order to get the, the workflow to trigger based on that would be to drag and drop that into this section. Now, we'd still have to update our function, the code that actually is running behind the workflow or after the workflow is triggered, um, but you don't actually have to touch the workflow itself uh, in any way. So that's pretty nice. Next thing I'm going to show you is the dynamic reporting criteria. So I've got a report open over here. And this is a report that was based on the deals module in CRM. And the records that we've brought into this report are any of those where the amount of the deal is less than the budgeted amount uh, that we've input. So this would help us confirm uh, what deals we have in place that we came in under budget on and so that might be an important statistic to share with with our customers or internally or, or wherever it might be and so you can see here the differences in the amounts there the budgeted amount on all of these is going to be greater than the actual amount of the deal we decided to group this report by the company or the account name here and i'll just edit this really quick to show you how this works so under our filters here if i go in and edit that um, you can see I've got the amount field. Uh, I've got this uh, less than uh, indicator or operator. And then in the past, I, I would have just simply put in a dollar amount right here, like you know, less than $5,000 or something like that. Um, but that wouldn't help me much when all of my deal amounts vary as much as they do here. So um, with this, now we can go into field and now we can choose, this is a currency field here, the amount is. So now we have we can choose any of the other currency fields within that module to compare this with. And that's how this report is built here. And that's how the new uh, dynamic criteria works. All right, I'm gonna look up a record in here. We got Barb Simon show you a little bit about what we've got going on with the emails and some of the changes there. So under the emails related list, you now have the ability to resize columns. So I mentioned earlier, you can make something like subject a lot bigger if you want to, you know, shrink down date. Uh, maybe you want to make this smaller. There you go. You can do whatever you want here to resize these things and, and kind of personalize that for yourself. Um, you can also go in and you can see now that these emails are organized by thread. So here's the latest, uh, or sorry, the earliest in the thread. Here's the latest in the thread up at the top. Um, you can also click, obviously, into these individual ones here. 
the other thing we can do now within the emails module is the attachments. So if I go into the attachments here, I can say add to, and I can either add this directly to the attachments related list. So that would get attached right over here on Barb's contact record under attachments, or I can add something to work drive, which is Zoho's cloud storage app, which integrates with the CRM, you know, as part of Zoho one as well, and um, would potentially allow you to store things over there too. Uh, another thing I want to show you on Barb's record while we're here, let's go to survey. Uh, so I'll show you the new survey integration here. Under survey, uh, now we have the ability, or now everything is automatically organized based on the department. So it's much easier to find the surveys that you're looking for here if you don't know the exact name of them. All right, and then I want to take you into the email deliverability area and show you if this is something you'd like to do where you can get to that. Recall that by the end of the month here, um, this is something that you're gonna wanna look at. So in your email deliverability, uh, we have available email sending domains, incomplete pending authentication and authenticated domains. Ideally, you're going to see any domain that you send email from listed down here under the authenticated domains. It will show email verified, authenticated, that's exactly what it should show. So if this was Aspen Tech's CRM and we were sending emails from our email addresses, uh, this would be exactly how we want it set up. But because this is the Taste and Savor CRM, um, this is not exactly how we want it set up. And this is, I'm guessing, where some of you guys may find yourselves um, in that you have a domain that's been added here uh, or you have a domain that you're sending emails from within the CRM that is your own. It's your company email domain, um, but maybe it's not been authenticated yet. And so when it comes to authentication, this is something that, again, we can potentially help you with if you're not comfortable with it. A uh, web developer, an IT person, they're, they're, they're good about these things too, typically. Um, but you need to authenticate the domain. And you would put in your email address. Let's just do something like that. Let's say an invalid domain. We'll put that in there. We go in, and then we're going to have to make some changes to our website. Uh, uh, not necessarily our website, sorry. To our hosting provider's DNS records for us, which obviously may be linked to your website, but is not necessarily one and the same. And those updates that you make to these DNS records are in order to verify that you do indeed own the, the domain that you're trying to to, to authenticate here. And so that's an important step to making this happen. Once that's done, you authenticate the domain and then everything's good and your emails continue to go out without issue. But if you don't do this before the end of the month, um, you're, or if you're on a public domain like Gmail or Yahoo or Comcast or things like that, um, then your emails are gonna get sort of reformatted or labeled as the fact that they're coming from Zoho on behalf of you, rather than appearing as if they're coming directly from you. So you wanna be mindful of that. Uh, there's also some additional information right here. You can click to learn more about this uh, if you go into this area of your own CRM. So um, that'll help you get going in the right direction, hopefully, and if there's anything we can do to assist, please let us know. All right, so that concludes the live demo portion of our presentation. I wanna switch back quickly here to the show and get this back up on there. Um, and now we've got some time for questions. Um, we've got actually about 20 minutes left in the time we had allotted for this. I'm certainly happy to wrap up early if uh, there aren't many questions, um, but happy to stick around too if you guys have some. So. Again, feel free to use the uh, Q&A at the uh, bottom of the screen there. Uh, click the little question mark icon. You can post a question to the Q&A, and I'd be happy to answer uh, whatever you've got for us. Just a reminder as well, um, not all of these features are going to be available in all of the Zoho CRM editions. 
Uh, some of them are also still in early access. Uh, we can help facilitate though, you know, making sure you're on the right subscription or let you know what you need to do to get there. Or if something is in early access, you know, we can help guide you through the process of either, you know, filling out the right web form to get access, or uh, we can reach out to support on your behalf, different things like that. So uh, feel free to reach out to the team here at Aspen Tech if you do have any questions, feedback, if you need anything relative to any of these new features or functionality in your CRM. Um, before anybody drops off, I also just wanted to extend a, a, a thank you to everyone for taking some time out of your day to join us here. Um, again, please contact us if you'd like to get access to any of these new features or if you have anything else that you'd like to talk about relating to Zoho. Um, and we've got a team of eight uh, US-based um, Zoho representatives, consultants, trainers, support staff to help you get the most out of Zoho. Um, I'm Marshall Knapp, president and owner here at Aspen Tech. It's been uh, nice talking with y'all. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for a few more minutes if um, you have any additional questions. And uh, if not though, we'll go ahead and wrap up here in uh, just a little bit. My contact information is here if you need anything. I appreciate you joining. Have a great rest of your day. All right. I do see a hand raised, let me see. Are you able to post your question to the Q&A there? We'll, we'll see if we can get that question in the Q&A. Um, but again, thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you are dropping off, have a great rest of your day. And uh, let us know if there's anything we can do to help you get more out of Zoho. It does not look like that question is coming in for the Q&A. So everyone will be receiving a follow-up email um, with the recording, the materials, all of those things. If you do have any questions or you need anything else, it's just as simple as replying to that email to me. Or of course, you can see my contact information on screen here too. So again, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day. I know.